And joining me now, live from Lake Charles, Louisiana, and the campus of McNeese State University, we have head coach Sasha Carlo and Bailey Tillman. Coach Bailey, thank you both so much for being here with us today. How are you guys doing? I'm good. I'm great. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Doing well. Doing well. Glad we could make this happen. Excited. Well, I mean, we're the ones who are excited getting ready for Southland volleyball season. It promises to be another exciting year of competitive volleyball in the Southland. And coach, obviously heading into your second season at the helm now. A rookie season can be challenging and it can also be very successful as it was for you. But what did you learn in that first year that you've really been able to implement second time around that maybe you couldn't in your first season? Great question. I, I learned a lot definitely about myself. Um, I learned a lot about my players and how to get the best out of them. Um, I think that the main thing that I take away from my first season is just being confident and true to myself. And um, when I do that, the girls obviously follow suit and they're a direct reflection of me. So just being, you know, my true self and trying to implement my my philosophies and my foundation and so that it's a clear message especially with so many new people this year and coach obviously like we said the successes of last season culminated in an unfortunate semi-final defeat to the eventual champions in southeastern louisiana do you use that memory specifically as motivation are there things that you revisit from those kind of games that will help prepare the team this year or is it just a completely fresh brand new slate in 2023 a little bit of both. Um, I wouldn't say an opponent specifically. We always talk about like nameless, faceless opponent. You know, we want to give our best game against whoever's on the other side of the net and be a united front as McNeese. So um, obviously, you know, everyone's going for the same goal here. Um, all the teams are preparing. They all want the same things, but we're always trying to find an edge. And for us, uh, we look at ourselves and what we can learn from last year as far as, you know, maybe statistics or offense versus defense and little things we can do in practice to improve so that we, when we are under those same pressure situations, hopefully we end up on top. And Bailey, great to see you. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Obviously, you've now experienced a full year with Coach Carlo. What's what's she like behind the scenes? What's preseason like? You know, very friendly and well spoken here in these moments. But what's it like when you're on the practice court during preseason? Yeah, during practice, it's definitely fun and very memorable. I think that uh, in college sports in general, any sport, not just volleyball, there's a balance between like having fun and then also getting down to the fundamentals. And she's a great mixture of that. We know how to have fun, but we're also getting work done at the same time. So it's just a matter of all of us, especially because we have like new people buying into that philosophy and just everything so that we can, you know, come on top, like she said. So it's fun having her around. I love it. <laughs> That's great to hear. And obviously, Speaking of your successes, Bailey, you know, all academic team last year, Louisiana Libero of the Year, just stacking accolade on accolade on accolade. How do you go about improving your game? What did you work on this summer specifically that will be a new string to your bow in the 2023 season? Yeah, so growing up, I always went by, you know, there's always something uh, new that you can learn every day, regardless of the level. People at the highest level can still learn something new. So over the summer, I, you know, had an internship with Dell, and that kind of helped me with my leadership skills. And I worked out in the morning at four in the morning, and she saw my Instagram post. Like, I was up at four in the morning. <laughs> People thought I was going to sleep. But, um, no, it's just a matter of, you know, staying balanced. And it at the end of the day, everyone has a contribution to it. So it's not just me. Like, uh, Sasha helped, obviously, a lot. My teammates, I can't get my words without uh, everyone else uh, contributing. So it's great to have everyone in on that. So, And, Coach, we've, we've spoken a little bit already about this being a brand-new mix of people on your team this year. Uh, some experience in the five returners, obviously, one of which is Bailey, but 10 new faces. That is a lot to bring in and a lot to embed into your culture. So, Firstly, what do you tell them when you're out on the recruiting trail in terms of what you'd expect from them when they come and join your McNeese team? Well, the three things I always talk about are connection, trust, and family. Those are really important words to me as a human and also um, for our program to have success. I feel like they're really important to instill in my, my student athletes. So um, connection goes both ways. Obviously, um, you can communicate, but connection is a deeper level, right? And 
really finding um, interests in each other's lives. And um, we, we talk about being a good teammate, but also being a good friend, you know, being a good listener. And that, that's a, a lot of what we do in practice. We make it a point to connect with each other in between plays. Um, and then that's how you build trust. And, and building trust for me is big with my players, but, but also they should be able to trust me that I have their best interests in mind. Um, and I wanna give them the best experience possible. Um, and then, you know, obviously family, you know, I'm, I'm big on family. My, my immediate family has been a part of my journey my whole life. Um, and, and I know the girls that I recruit and the girls I have on this team are big on family and I love all their families. So um, this is an extension of their family and we want them to feel comfortable and be able to be their true selves at all times. No, that's brilliant. That's essential in building a successful team. That's great to hear. And the, the 10 newcomers that you do have, uh, obviously, expectations must be high in terms of making sure that they're they're up to speed quickly. So how do you go about teaching and coaching your philosophies during that preseason period in order to be ready for a tough non-conference schedule? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's hard for sure. Um, it's not an easy task, but I have amazing assistant coaches who are bought into my, my foundation as well. So they're, they're reiterating the same stuff. I have five returners that are reiterating the same stuff. So when you keep things simple and clear and you write it down, we have a handbook and we have everything kind of written out so that they can review it even late at night when they're, you know, thinking about volleyball, they can look at it and they can kind of keep reiterating in their head. I think it just makes it a lot easier and a lot more smooth. You know, when you keep things generic or kind of obscure and you don't really make it obvious or, or you know, repeatable, it's it's hard for girls to buy in. So we, we try to make it as simple as we could and write it all out so that they can always review it if they have some free time. So I think that's the easiest way to get 10 new people on board as fast as possible. And Bailey, from, from your side, obviously, as clearly one of the leaders within this team now, having been around for a couple of years and got that experience level. Uh, how do you go about welcoming these players? And is there anything specific that you think really works in terms of what you do in, in team building and, and getting the new ladies integrated within the group? Yeah, I think that it goes back to, you know, our three things, connection, trust, and family. Um, I think the connecting part of it, it's, it's important to connect with people, not only on the court, but off the court as well. Um, so for example, like off the court, you know, we do team bonding stuff. We actually did a retreat and it was really fun that all the coaches put together. Um, and I think that helped us get closer, um, not as, only as a team, but as friends too. You got to like, if you sit down with people and actually have a real conversation with them, you'll know like where they're coming from, where their mindset is at. So I think it's really cool to do that. And then example on the court, uh, or in practice, we have like accountability partners. So, um, when we get water breaks and stuff like that, we connect with them and then we just um, share with each other how we feel about how we did against this drill or stuff like that. So I think um, it all goes back to the three things, um, connection, trust, and family. That's awesome. That's awesome. And something I want to touch on just in terms of on the court, right, is coaches playing style. We, we talk a lot to coaches and let them tell us their playing style, but I'd rather hear it from the players who are carrying out directly. So Bailey, in terms of what Sasha is trying to get across to you guys, what is that in terms of your philosophy on the court and how you go about defeating each opponent that you play? Yeah, so at the end of the day, obviously, our goal is to win. You know, we want to win the game, but there's things that you have to do and we have to do as a team to get to that point. So we have philosophy of, you know, we, we want to make every play better than the last one. So bettering the ball, we say that every single day at practice, um, pushing our passes up, up to the tape so our um, setter can set the ball. Um, and then just honestly finishing um, what we started, not being so lackadaisy during drills and just, you know, hammering out on the first point. You don't want to wait until, you know, the third set to turn it on. You want to put um, your foot on the gas pedal as soon as possible. So I think just knocking everything out um, at the beginning and then also connecting with everyone on the court, um, you know, to get that goal to win. All gas, no breaks. I like it 100%. <laughs> um, gas. Coach, I, I have to touch on another one of your very talented returners, uh, Sani Rantanen uh, from Finland, which in itself is a incredible situation to have a, a successful European player within our league uh, at McNeese. But she was our freshman of the year. Tell us a little bit more about her. What What's she like behind the scenes? And I guess, what are your expectations of her going into this second season? Yeah, Sunny is a, is an awesome, uh, unique individual. She 
she's a gentle giant, like we always say. Um, you know, that girl can't be phased by anything. She's kind of a glue um, for our girls. Everybody gets along with her. She's so easygoing. Um, what I'm really excited about this year, though, is that she's come in with this mindset of no expectations. You know, obviously coming off a great year as a freshman, you can put all this, you know, unnecessary pressure on yourself. But she's admitted that she's just coming in like clean slate and she's just excited for the opportunity. Um, and, and, and she's com more competitive than I've ever seen her because normally she's pretty like, you know, chill. She's not outwardly competitive, but it's funny in the drills. She's been like, if, you know, if the score's not right, she's like yelling at the scorekeeper or whatever in her version of yelling is not even really yelling, but you know, like she's totally excited about competing every single day. And, and I, I think that's going to be so important in her growth as a player. And there's me butchering my question in my own head. We'll edit this bit. <laughs> um, as you go into the second season at the helm, I think it's obvious that you've already mentioned the thing that matters at the end of the day is winning to both of you. This has to be successful. You want to be a successful program. But how do you gauge success from year one to year two? Is it as simple as we have to win the whole thing? Or are there stepping stones along the way that you can really hang your hat on and say, we're, we're proud of the improvements that we've made? Yeah, I actually don't really like talking about winning that much. I think when you get super caught up with the end result, you just overwhelm yourself. Um, we talk about not so much execution, but the effort that we put in and, and the different levels of effort. Like there's physical effort, mental effort, emotional effort, right? Like, and so how we gauge that is it's a daily process, you know, um, relentlessly improve, you know, pursuing improvement and, and finding ways to, to gauge ourselves every day, whether that's with statistics or in drills. And I tell them all the time, there's going to be drills that you don't win in practice. And that's OK, because they come in thinking they need to win every single drill. And sometimes the adversity is good. Like losing in practice is good. So you know how to deal with it and you know how to challenge yourself the next time, right? And you kind of have a gauge. So yes, everybody's going for the win. Obviously we wouldn't be here if that's not the case, but it's kind of like, you don't need to obsess over it. It's going to happen if you take care of all the little stuff, which again, connection, trust, and family. When we can take care of those things, the winning takes care of itself. And Bailey, it's funny because coach has kind of preempted my last question to you yeah, just a little bit where I wanted to get to know a couple of your teammates a little bit more and, and talk about their attitudes in terms of winning and losing. So if there's one person in your squad who's going to take losing that drill really badly, who is that? And equally, who's the one person that you don't want to lose to because they're going to gloat just that little bit more? Ooh, that's a good I question. I like that. Um, I would say... Honestly, I would probably go with my roommates, Kendall and Kenzie, because I live with them. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's not like there's any like uh, beef or anything, but it's just like, okay, we live under the same roof. And if you beat me in that drill, like just the other day, Kenzie hit me in the head. Like I literally <laughs> got blasted in the forehead and I was like, had trouble getting up. And we talked, like we joked about it at home. It was funny. And I, but in the back of my head, I was like, okay bet I'm gonna get you back the next time <laughs> so it was just like a love hate thing um so yeah I'd say my roommates Kendall and Kenzie but also to go off of what Sasha was saying Sunny is very very competitive so um going against her it's like if even if there's like a slight like miscommunication on a call or something she'll she'll argue she'll argue you down like to death so <laughs> um it's, it's all fun and games though at the end of the day <laughs> Well, I guess the next thing we need to work on in practice is our heading, right? You know, if it's yeah. if it's coming at your head, you know, straight straight back over, over the net with a header. We can we'll work on that in future. I'm hey, sure. I have to um, say, coach, she dug that ball. By the way, it went oh. up, and we played it out, and we sent it back over. So that's the gritty defense we like to play. Yep. Doesn't even need any training on heading. Perfect. Well done, Bailey. That's yeah. amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. Coach Bailey, thank you so much for taking the time to be here and talk to us today. This has been great. We're super excited for McNeese Volleyball this season and just can't wait to see you all back on the court very soon. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank you for your time. We're excited too.